happy 2023. Um, you know, the joke is for me, most of you, I haven't seen you since last year. It's been, you know, uh, they always said, Dean said I was the pastor of bad jokes, so, you know, <laughs> uh, he said that at the memorial service, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, uh, welcome today. Uh, we know it's going to be a little smaller crowd. We had a great little party here last night. And uh, some of the young people that are on stage were here till 1 a.m. playing games, right? So, uh, but a uh, good time was had by all. It was neat. It's our first time we ever did a New Year's party at our church, and I think it was a success. Uh, I don't think they're here, but let's give a round of applause to Paula and Earl for doing that. And if they are here, they're probably just sleeping in today after that extravaganza. They were here since 5:30 setting up and and all that. And, I think the Rivera's helped too, so that was great. Well, we often sing um, Psalm 118.24 or a version of it that says, you probably know, this is the day that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, today, New Year's Day 2023, let's think of it as this. This is the year that the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it, amen? So what's, how's the echo go? This is the year that the Lord has made. All right, so let's keep that in our heart, that this is a new year, but it, the Lord's made it, and he has uh, something for us this year. So let's stand, and we'll worship a couple songs. Today, we're going to be doing a little bit different. Uh, we're going to have like a combo sermon slash personal reflection slash prayer time. You know, it's going to be kind of a little something to kick off the, the new year with God, uh, in 2023 and, and really set our hearts right. So let's start, though, by uh, standing in worship. Good morning, everyone, and Happy New Year to you. From number six, as we head into this new year, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. As we reflect and pray and sing together throughout this service, let's reflect on what the Lord has done in 2022 and look forward to what the Lord can do for us and what we will do with him in 2023. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
whisper to your name, be the glory. seated brothers and sisters. Great uh, segue into our uh, time here this morning. Um, also, I wanted to say, you know, before we forget, it was also amazing that uh, we've been together a lot as a church these last couple weeks. Uh, we had a Christmas Eve service and a Christmas Day service, so let's give a round of applause to Pastor Greg for all that he put together for the the Christmas services, really appreciate all the hard work and all you guys that participated in that. Um, the Lord has made this year, and uh, he's the creator of the universe. We can bless his name for who he is, and he's the creator of time. So let's just spend a couple minutes as we open praising God for who he is. Maybe just have a few of you pray out loud as we begin this morning just on this focus of uh, praising God for who he is. If a few of you could pray out loud for us.
both the uh, blessings and the trials that you brought us through uh, through the years and uh, also what you're going to do in our midst. We ask that you will be using this little church as your uh, lighthouse. Thank you, Lord, for your timing. You always know it's the right time. You always know what's best. And certain things you allow, and certain things you restrain. Lord, I pray that we would all see your hand work in this house. Amen. Thank you, guys. Um, for those of you that are watching on the stream, we're going to be doing a little bit of a prayer time. Unfortunately, you won't have the handout to write on, but uh, you can get out a piece of paper and a pencil. And I don't know if uh, someone, maybe Skylar, could, could you pass these out to everybody? Every, everyone's going to need one of these prayer cards today. And if you need a pencil, if there's not one in your pew, hey, John, behind you, there's a cup of pencils. Uh, yeah, maybe anybody that needs a pencil or a pen, raise your hand and John can give those out to you. And we're not going to have Sunday school today so that we can stay together as, a fam as families during this time. And uh, we're going to be looking at three different areas. And the first area is giving thanks for 2022. Giving thanks for 2022. The uh, verse that, uh, the theme verse for this one is a classic verse uh, for Christians. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Oh, Skylar, we're going to need a few for these guys, too, when you get a chance up on the stage. Um, so if you can look at me, uh, look, look at your sheet on uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let me repeat that, because you might have called, wait, God's will for me in Christ Jesus, what is it? Rejoice always, pray continually. And give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's one of the most classic and foundational verses on how we are to live your life as a Christian, to rejoice always, to pray continually, to give thanks in all circumstances. And these attitudes don't really make sense without Christ in your life, do they? It doesn't really make sense to rejoice always without Christ in your life. It doesn't really make sense to pray continually without Christ in your life. It doesn't really make sense to give thanks in all circumstances without Christ in your life. From a human perspective, this life that we live is hard. And uh, Paul was speaking out of hardship when he wrote these epistles. You know, he had gone through so much persecution and hardship as an apostle. And he was speaking out of a posture of difficult circumstances in his life. And uh, but we have every reason, too, when we're going through difficult circumstances, we have every reason not to be joyful in this life. We have every reason not to be joyful when we experience hardships and persecution, well, although we don't experience much persecution, but definitely hardships. Yet in Christ, our lives are different. You know, it's not that we suddenly become optimists. It's not that all of a sudden we're, we're pessimists before Christ. Now we're optimists. You know, it doesn't work that way. But it's that we recognize God's supervision as we grow in Christ. We recognize his supervision over all things and all aspects of our life. How God allows things for a purpose. How God uses things uh, for a good purpose. How God loves us. We recognize his promises and his hope. Uh, and the joy comes only from recognizing Christ as being on the throne of our lives. I was thinking about the memorial service for Charles Johnson Jr., on Friday, for those of you that were there, what a time of hopeful reflection on the promises of God is really what I walked away from the, the memorial. Uh, you know, Rhonda and Charles III have experienced an incredibly great loss in their lives. And yet they were the ones running around sharing the hope in Christ with everybody else that was there. They were the ones inspiring us to the promises of God. They were the ones encouraging us with the hope that, of, of heaven that we have in Christ. They were the ones ministering to others more than even being ministered to. And it reminds me of what Paul said in uh, 2 Corinthians 6.10. He was writing about hardships in his life, and he said this. He said, He is sorrowful, 
yet always rejoicing. You know, it's not that we brush aside the sorrow that hardships bring in our lives. We are going to be sorrowful when difficult things come into our lives. Yet, Paul says, always rejoicing because our eyes are fixed on Jesus through everything that we go, all, every circumstance, difficult and good. Um, this is the foundational posture of every believer, is to how every believer is to walk uh, through the difficult things that we live in this earth. So before we can pray in the new year, we really need to reflect on the old year, 2022, both the good things and the hard things, uh, because they're all from the Lord. So if you could just take a few minutes, and in this first section here, write out your circumstances in 2023. What are good things that you can thank God for? And what are the hard things that you can thank God for? Actually, for now, just write hard things, because we're to thank God for all circumstances, good and hard. I was thinking about this. If you can't think of good things in your life, I'll give you a few. Air to breathe. <laughs> You're alive. Uh, you know, you have food, shelter, clothing. You uh, have, a, you know, family members uh, surrounding you. And uh, so those are here. That, I just started your list of good things, okay? Now add to those other good things. And then the hard things. You know the hard things that you've experienced in your life. Write those out. And we'll just give you a few minutes to do that. shorter lives, but you've still got good things and hard things you can write out. You just raise your hand if you need a couple more minutes, or if everybody's good. All right. 
Now remember, on these hard things, write out all your hard things, not just the ones you want to give thanks for, right? <laughs> but all your hard things and uh, all the good things. Okay, what, we're just going to take a few minutes in prayer, and the way we're going to do this is you're probably sitting with your family, and unfortunately you guys are up here. You might want to quickly go to your family just for prayer time. Um, and uh, stay in your family group and just pray through some of these things. Obviously, if there's some personal things you don't want to pray for, you don't have to reveal that. But uh, pray with your family. And those of you that are, uh, aren't here with other family members, just join in with a couple others. So there's a three or four of you, okay? So just group together in three or four. And then just pray uh, as much as you'd like in your group. And if you're not a, a out loud prayer person, you can just give affirmation as others pray in your group, okay? So just get in your family groups and let's pray for a few minutes.
we thank you for your faithfulness in all circumstances, both good and ill, that have transpired for us over the last 12 months. You are with us always, even to the end of the age. We thank you for this in all things. Amen. Let's stand together and sing to the Lord. So last night we had a, a pretty, pretty big party, really. And uh, um, one of the things that you celebrate is, you know, what the Lord has done, or you might say, what what He is, uh, and then what He is going to do in the new year. The idea of the new year is, it's new, and uh, you haven't done anything yet to mess it up or it's nothing particularly as bad as has happened. And uh, there's, you have hopes for the future. You have hopes for what the Lord will do in your life or what uh, events might uh, transpire and uh, come to pass. And how do, when we think about our hopes and our dreams and our desires, what do we, um, how do we engage God in that? Do we sometimes, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to just, what do I need to do to get it done, right? I think about if I, let's say it's a task on, okay, getting in shape, right? You think, well, I'm going to go to the gym and a lot and uh, we'll uh, get her done kind of idea. 
and do it under our own power, right? And uh, that's how, how I think of it, is what is it going to take to get it done in a realistic way? And I don't think about necessarily engaging in the Lord. And uh, let's learn from the song that we just sang how we might engage the Lord in our plans and uh, find out what his plans are for us. And so if you could turn to Psalm 37, we just sang this, verses 3 through 5 and 23. Psalm 37 in your Bibles, either electronic or hard copy. And these are also available on your, the uh, handout you just got. Psalm 37, 3, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Let's stop there for a second. So I'm going to focus more, most on the second part. What are we, we, we tend to focus on that part. What do we got to do? What's, what do I have to do here? Well, dwell in the land. That seems pretty easy. I can live. You know, I can dwell in the land. Cultivate faithfulness. No. So what, what does that mean? What, am I, what is the Lord asking me to do here? Cultivate would be like growing, or culti- you've cultivated gardens, right? I grow hot peppers, so I have to cultivate the ground first. I have to put down fertilizer, then we pl- get the plants, plant them, and then they grow. Hopefully, they grow. And uh, um, to cultivate, I have to do all those things. And so with faithfulness, it's the same way. We have to um, engage in uh, things that grow faithfulness in our lives. And um, we'll talk about that in just a second. Verse 4, And delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And um, he will give you the desires of my heart. And I've thought about this verse a lot last year. Um, this was a, the keynote verse in, um, in a, a weekend getaway. My wife and I went on the dream weekend, it was called, and it was to discover what is your next step in your life or what are your de- true desires and what is God doing it within those desires. And this is the keynote verse. And so one of the questions you need to ask yourself is, what do I desire? And is, what is at the core of those desires? And is that a desire that God put there? Last thing is trust also in him and he will do it. Well, that comes from the very first verse, verse 3, trust in the Lord. Placing, when we think about the things that we want or uh, want to commit to or cultivate, are we placing our trust really in him to accomplish those? And is it the, the right thing that we want to accomplish in him? Finally, and there are very many verses like this, the steps of a man are established by the Lord, and he delights in his, that person's way. And uh, I was thinking of one um, in Proverbs 16, there are a couple verses like that, that, that talk about committing your way, or a man plans his way, but the Lord directs his step. So I often think about that, where it's like, okay, I make these plans, but God is really at work within my plans if, uh, if I'm trusting in him. So as, you, uh, as we go through this again, trust in the Lord and do good. So placing our trust in him, our, um, essentially our faith in him to accomplish the things that we, we want him to accomplish in us, the desires of my heart, and what are the, the good desires of my heart? And I always thought about that. Well, you know, I thought about, well, I want my family to be strong. I want um, them to be uh, cared for. But why? Ultimately, it's to be uh, affecting people with the gospel so that they may start from a strong foundation. That's a good desire. That's the desires of my heart for that to happen. Did he put that there? I think so. I think that was a good desire that he put there. What is the desire now? Now I'm going to point this to you. What is your desire? What do you want this year? What do you really want? 
It can be anything. What do you really want this year? And the three things, dwell, trust, delight, and commit. And that's what we're going to do in just a few minutes here, is um, when you, trusting in the Lord, delight in Him, and the, the statement I would make there when we delight in Him is are we taking the time really engage him in relationship? Are we delighting in the Lord? You know, we can delight in a puppy. We can delight in a uh, spouse. We can delight in our children. We can delight in relationship. We can delight possibly even in our job. But whatever it is, do we delight ourselves in the Lord, taking the time to really spend time with him in a relationship? And it says he will give you, the, that's when you get a chance to really Lay out your desires before him. He knows what they are. And that's what we're going to do right now. So in your, on your paper here, it says, my concerns for 2023. I would uh, add to it my concerns and my desires for 2023. What, what are my hopes, my concerns, and my desires for 2023? And write them down in the space provided. And I'll give you a few moments to do that. Give you one more minute to do that. Anybody else? Anybody need more time? As they say in business meetings, hearing none, proceed. You can, we'll get together and pray again in your same groups, and uh, then we'll have the music team uh, sing a song. So let's pray about those things together with your uh, team, as it were, and uh, look at your, share what, you can share what you want. You don't have to share those things, but 
uh, be praying uh, for the items and your desires and concerns that you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So what we're doing is we're, um, for those that came in, so we wrote down your concerns and delights and so on. Uh, get with a family, family group or just whatever group that you see and uh, go ahead and uh, um, just pray with them for your concerns and desires and hopes for 2023. So let's go ahead and do that.
Lord, may we delight ourselves in you, trusting in you that you will do it. Help us to commit our ways this year to you, Lord, that we may find success and find joy from the Lord our God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let's stand and sing together another song. of God forever. 
So uh, I may ask you guys to sit down on the music team in a different location. Um, so I have contracted a cold um, from my relatives, so uh, that's why I've moved back here. So, uh, so I may not join you in your prayer group, but I wanted to have a chance to pray with you. Um, I'd love to do that in person, but maybe one of the good things about COVID is that we're a little more sensitive to those things um, than we used to be. So, um, I want to look at a verse uh, in Ephesians 6 about prayer. And it's Ephesians 6, 18. It says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. If I look at this, I go, wow, that's, a, that's quite an exhortation. That's from Paul to the Christians in Ephesus. Uh, but that's, he's saying this is how you should live. This is what you should do. I was watching an old interview that's online with Billy Graham. And uh, the reporter was asking him about prayer. And uh, I'm fond of Billy Graham. And, and uh, actually went to one of his crusades when I was still a teenager. When he was still doing them. Um, but he, the reporter asked him, well, what about prayer? Well, how do you do that? How does that work? And Billy Graham looked at him and said, well, I, I'm praying right now. I'm praying that what I'm saying, whatever I say, what I'm doing would be honoring to God and effective. I'm doing that right now while we're having this conversation. And I go, wow, what a, what a good example. But it was kind of a flag for me that I don't really operate that way, not normally. And I've <clears throat> had opportunity to look at that in my life, and I'll just lay this out for you a little bit. Um, one of the things um, I have did when I was younger, I have gray hair now, is I was uh, pretty ambitious in certain things, liked to work hard and whatever I, most things that I did, even liked to play hard and do that and give it, your, give it all you have. And I, I got into running. Uh, for a while, and now I don't run still because my knees complain when I do that, and uh, my right knee, so I decided that's probably not the best activity for, for me at this stage of life, but I did it for a long time. Matter of fact, I loved it. I loved to run when it was hot, and it turns out I ran for years, and I had really pretty good stamina for my age, um, and I still do just a little bit, so... Uh, we were out on the, and I, you know, I said, I think I can do that. I think I can do that. And, and one of the things that led to that habit of life, because sometimes when you're strong in something, if you have a strength, something that comes easily to you, or something that you've worked on, you lean on that because you're good at it. It's not that hard for you. And I, I found that. We were on a Boy Scout trip, and all the Boy Scouts and the Boundary Waters trip and in the Boundary Waters trip, you have a ton of gear you have to carry, and you have to carry a canoe. And they rig up this harness where one person has to carry the canoe. Well, it turns out, we didn't think about this before we left, um, that we divided up the troop with all the young boys, you know. And uh, it turns out most of the boys in my section were all narrow-shouldered at the age, and they couldn't fit in this harness. And so I ended up carrying the canoe. And, you know, there's people, I'm only five foot seven, a lot bigger than me, and we'd walk in by, and one of, the, one of the young strapping boys coming the other way with one of the troops said, how come, how come we got the old guys carrying the canoes? Why, why is that? Why is that? He said, well, I think I can still do it. But one of the things that led to a little bit in my life was a dependence and a faith in my own ability, in my own stamina, in my own initiative, and, uh, and 
and didn't really realize it, but I was able to do things and able to work hard and able to work long, and I put a lot of faith in that. And, uh, and I think maybe inappropriate or misplaced faith, not in God. What I really wanted, what we all want, what a lot of people want is God to bless what we're doing and to have God's blessing. And I'm not sure I really knew the difference. And so, and I think this is one of the advantages of, for you who have a little gray hair like me, is that you've learned this as a perspective in life. You've learned that, that it is the Lord, when the Lord blesses something, when you offer it to Him, when you offer your labor and your fishes and loaves to Him, and when He blesses it, He does that in a way that is graceful and beautiful and and there's a growth that we cannot do. So I wanted to do this together and look at pray for all types of things, all types with all of the Lord's people. With this in mind, keep alert and always keep on praying. You know, once in a while I was reminded when I was into my running thing, I would kind of brag about my ego a little bit, you know, how good I was at it and how often I did it and how far I went. And I would keep track of how fast I went. <clears throat> Once in a while, God would show me that I wasn't all as good as I said I was. We were at lunch. And for my age, still, I was running farther and faster than most other people. We sat down at lunch. And uh, there was one guy, we were just talking. We were in Florida, my wife and I, on a vacation. Pretty neat story, but... Uh, but this guy across from the table, he's, oh, you run, that's great. That's just great. It's great cardiovascular. He was so enthusiastic about running. And I told him my whole story and how great I was and all my initiative. <clears throat> and he looked at me and he says, you know, I was a runner in the 1952 Olympics. <laughs> and I go, oh, you're in the Olympics? <laughs> I guess my running compared to your running is kind of, kind of embarrassing. <laughs> See, I was going to be in the 1948 Olympics, but I fell and broke my arms. And I, so I'm going, wow. So I got these reminders every so often in God's gentle way that I shouldn't have faith in my own abilities. I should have faith in Him and prayer and put these things before Him. So maybe you're a little like me. Maybe there are times you've had faith in what you do and your initiative. And we have to have initiative and do things and be responsible and be faithful, but we need to trust the results to, Lord, to the Lord. We're not in charge of those. So maybe you're a little like me. Maybe you don't know exactly what to pray about. Well, Paul had some advice for that. <clears throat> he said in Romans 8, 26, he says, likewise, the Spirit, this is the Spirit of God, helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So maybe you're real busy, maybe you have a lot of things on your mind, and you don't know exactly what to pray. It says here, the Spirit of God, the Spirit of the living God, will help us to know what to pray. With groanings too deep for words, he can move in your heart in a way where you know this would be a good thing to pray for. All types of things with God's people. So I want to give you uh, a few thoughts of things we could pray about together as we seek to do this together. And there may be other things because you have a relationship with God and a unique, your circumstance is unique. God can tell you that's what Paul said to the church in Rome. He says, the Holy Spirit can tell you, hey, this is an important thing you should pray for. So just because I have an idea or a suggestion, there may be something else that is more important for you, and God can tell you what that is. Because you have a relationship with Him, and He cares about your life, and He cares about every person in your life. So, um, but I'll give you a few suggestions. These are just suggestions. Um, I believe I have grown over time in my view of God's ability versus my ability, that he is much greater than I, and I must look to him. I'm still growing in that. Maybe you could pray 
for your own growth. In whatever area you're growing in with the Lord, in faith to trust Him, it's probably different from mine. But maybe you could ask God to help you grow in those things. Maybe you could meet the equivalent of the Olympic runner in your life who could gently say, hey, this would be good for you to think about. Maybe you could pray a little bit like Billy Graham did. That what you do, the things you undertake, would honor God and put Him first this year. We try to balance our time in many things. Maybe you could pray the same thing that Billy Graham said. Whatever I say, whatever I do, would put God first and honor Him in 2023. You know, one of the things that is on God's heart is people and their chance to know him and their chance to follow him and their chance to know who he is. It would be good today to pray for those people you care about, for their health and their growing knowledge of who he is. There are many people in this county where we live, eight out of ten people don't go to church anywhere. How are they going to learn about who God is? How are they going to learn there's a God who cares about them? So it's okay to make a list. I'm going to pray for this person, that they would know that God is good this year. So those are three. So I, I want to pray together that if there's something else that's personal to your life, and I just want to seek that together, and then we're going to split up and pray again. Okay? So why don't we pray Together, Lord, it says here, as Paul said to the church in Rome, that, uh, that your spirit intercedes in our lives and tells us things we may not be aware of. And we come before you and we are limited. We, I am <laughs> so limited, Lord, but I thank you that you see everything and value everything exactly right. We ask you if there's anything individually you want us to pray for together today that you would put that on our hearts now Well, I would like to split up. I gave you several ideas, but God may have given you another idea. And I think it would be good to pray for the people you care about by name, if you're comfortable doing that. So why don't we split up in our groups again? And again, because of my cold, I will not be joining you in your group, but I will pray with you.
Lord, you know the requests of our heart for today and tomorrow and the next month. Um, even when we cannot find the words, your spirit makes intercession for us on our behalf, Lord. You know the desires of our heart even when we do not. And we pray, Lord, that you would walk through those things with us as we pray for ourselves and our loved ones and our friends and those who do not know you. May we keep our eyes fixed on you and be praying for all people on their behalf. Amen. Let's stand and sing to the greatness of God and the gifts he's given us. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken, and grace.
to be the name of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, you can have a seat for a moment as Mike gives us those announcements before sending us off. All right. Well, great time together praying with you all this morning and uh, reflecting on what the Lord's done. There may be some things that, you know, hit deep in your heart this morning that uh, probably didn't have enough time to process, but I'd encourage you to take, take this outline that we went through this morning during your devotional times this week and 
there may be things that, boy, I struggle to give thanks to that. You may need to wrestle with those things with the Lord this week and prepare your hearts for the coming year. Um, we are, next weekend, a good part of our church, probably over half, is going to the Fusion Conference in Wisconsin Dells. And, uh, yeah, it's a little loud, I guess, John. Um, and so um, we are still going to have a service, and our deacon uh, Dave Telcott is going to be leading that time. Uh, but it'll be a small group, so just keep that in mind. Those of you that aren't going to Fusion, it'll probably be a very small gathering, but we'll be together next Sunday while the rest of us are at Fusion. And uh, for Fusion, we are, I volunteered us to uh, assist one of the kids' sessions in Fusion, the 5 through 12-year-olds, because we have so many volunteers or so many people going to Fusion. So I, I just need five to seven volunteers to help during that session. Saturday at 1045 for one hour, uh, you'll help. You won't have to prepare anything. You're just going to help the leader who's leading that session break, when we, they break up the kids into small groups, help lead a small group. You'll have a script on exactly what to do with the small group. And so if you are going to Fusion and you can help me out, at Saturday at 10.45 a.m. at Fusion, let me know. I need about seven volunteers would be ideal. So that is next weekend. The only other thing is that uh, after this uh, Fusion, so in two weeks, we're going to be starting a new series on prayer, going deeper in prayer. So that's why we wanted to kick it off here on New Year's Day, and then we'll be doing a four-part series starting in two weeks where we really look more in-depth in prayer of our lives and what the Lord has to say about that in his word. So be looking forward to that. Have a great uh, New Year's Day with your family and friends and uh, enjoy uh, this week. Have a good have a good time. And there's actually leftover food from last night, I believe. So if you're hungry, you'd like to grab a snack, there's some out in the uh, fellowship hall. Thanks for coming. <laughs>